there, everybody. This is Mike. This is Low Def Media. And hey, like the title said, today we're going to talk about cameras. And I've got two different topics. One is comparing this T7i to my Sony uh, ZV-1F. And the reason why I want to compare those two is it's old DSL old DSLR technology compared to the newer point and shoot uh, line of logging cameras uh, that Sony has released. And the other is, is not so much a rant, but it, it's a quandary. Um, again, getting back to the title, I'm confused. All right, so there's a lot of press and a lot of videos about the DJI Pocket 3. And I get it great specs, great camera, but as someone who's used the DJI Pocket, well, Osmo Pocket 1 since it, it came out, I can say that working with a gimbal, any gimbal, much less one that's connected to your camera like this, it presents its own set of challenges. It's it's very difficult and if you watch some of the videos when they're talking about the camera if they're if they're honest enough to talk about some of the cons because what I've noticed a lot of them are pumping up all of the positives and very few are talking about some of the negatives but when you're using a camera like this where you want it to go and what you want it to do, there is a learning curve because when you're using, and I'll, I'll do this, when you've got a point and shoot like this camera, okay? And right now we're using the Canon T7i DSLR. It's at least, and I'm looking here on, um, on the web, and this camera, uh, you can't even buy new anymore. You have to buy it refurbished. This camera refurbished on Amazon is $899. All right, and I've got a 10 to 18 mil uh, wide angle lens on it. It only goes, it only stops down to 4.5. And so not, you're not gonna get the blurry background or anything like that, but I, I find that it's best for vlogging. And I'm gonna compare that to the Sony ZV-1F, which is a 2.0 um, focal length and it shoots 4K. And I wanna see, does an $899 camera with a kit lens um, how does that compare to the new uh, Sony vlogging cameras that are point shoot very small? So we'll see during the course of the video, I'll switch to that one. All right, so like I was saying, when you're talking about using a Pocket 3, a gimbal style camera, when you're pointing it where you want it to go, sometimes it'll go there, sometimes it won't. This camera, because I know exactly where the lens is, if I point it, that's where it's gonna go. And so I find that using these cameras are much easier and much less of a hassle than using a gimbal camera. Now, the stabilization in this, in, in a point and shoot, obviously not gonna be as good as this, um, but what I will say about these cameras, and, and I'm not so much, I'm not so sure about the Pocket 3 because I don't own one, but the problem with this camera is the field of view. It's not as wide, and so you really have to hold it pretty far away from you. And the second thing is, is what's in focus. And so on my camera, because it's a F 2.0, I think, or somewhere around there, you don't get a blurry background, a very negligible background, but the focal distance is so bad that you have to hold it out in order to get it to focus on you. Now, most of everything in the frame is in focus beyond that point, so that's good. But with the Pocket 3, you're always getting that, that somewhat blurry background and you can't do anything about it. It's easier to add that blurry background in post with certain, certain editing software, but if it's already there, you can't get rid of it. So if you're vlogging and you want people to see where you're at and what you're doing, that Pocket 3, well, it's gonna have that blurry background, so you're gonna have to flip that camera around and focus all on the landscape and not your face because otherwise it's blurry behind you and you can't recover it. Hey, you know what? Let's switch over to that Sony. All right, now we are using the Sony ZV-1F. Again, that's a 2.0 focal length and it's shooting 4K 30 frames a second. And so getting back to the topic at hand, talking about gimbal style cameras, this isn't, it, the issues that I have with a gimbal style camera aren't relegated to just cameras like this. 
it's using a gimbal period because gimbals tend to, and, and I know they don't, but it feels like they have a mind of their own. I've got a number of gimbals. I've got the Insta360 Flow. I've got um, a DJI knockoff that's made by Vivint, or not Vivint. Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, no, not Vivint, it's made by Vivitar. And it was a $50 gimbal that I picked up at Walmart. Uh, I also have uh, a Feutech uh, larger, the M6 Max. And so it's for uh, cell phones and for smaller cameras like the Sony or the Canon that I had. And so it's more of your traditional gimbal. And so I've got a variety of them and it's hard to get them to respond in a way that you want them to. Now I'm sure that if I spent a lot of time using those gimbals that I would become much more proficient, but that's not the kind of content that I create. So in the, in the rare instances where I need to pick it up and use it, there is such a steep learning curve and getting it to behave the way you want it to is just frustrating. And so again, because I don't use this style of camera very often, I do like it, but because I don't use it very often, when I do use it, it's frustrating because you've got to hold it so far away to get it in, in focus. And with the Pocket 3, you have to have it kind of far away because it is a, a tighter field of view. And so you have to have it pretty far away from you. And so you have to, and it comes with a, a wireless mic, but you have to have external mic uh, with that particular camera. But then that brings me up to my, my next issue that I have with these style cameras. And that's when you take them with you. And I've mentioned this before on this channel, I, I, I like to take cameras with me when I go on trips. And I find that I take smaller cameras like this Sony or like an action camera because they're just so easy to use and to, to store. But with this camera, you're always having to be aware of this, okay? You're always having to be aware of this gimbal. And throwing this in your pocket just isn't the smartest thing to do. You have to have some kind of case for it. And if I'm using this, this is an Alonzi. Let me hold this up here. This is an Alonzi case, right? Okay, so this allows me to have the cleats here on the back, the, another one here, another one here, and it also has a quarter 20 mount at the bottom. Okay, so very versatile. But I can't put that in the case that it came with, that the pocket came with, right? So I have to find a different way to store it. So I have a little cap that goes on it. So that's another piece that you now have to keep up with. Now with this camera, because it's a fixed lens, I can throw this in a bag and not really have to worry about it because the lens is only about that big. Now with a, a camera like this, you have to be a little bit more cautious, but you put a lens cap on here and this lens cap will fit in your pocket. This is very easy to keep up with. All right, so you put this on here, no problem, right? Uh, we've dealt with these kind of cameras for years. So very simple. But with this camera, not so simple. There's all kinds of cases. Even if I didn't have this on here, there's the hard sided case that it comes with and that's something else you have to keep up with. So I don't get the hype. That's the whole point of this, this uh, video is I don't get the hype. And so what I would like from you, if you own the Pocket 3 or if you own a different Pocket style camera, Pocket 1, Pocket 2, let me know what, um, what hacks you've come up with to make it easier to use, okay? Is it your primary shooter? Is it the one that you create all your content with or do you just use it for B-roll? Uh, let me know down in the comments uh, because I'm I'm fascinated by this because I, like I said, I've owned this one for years and I very rarely use it. And um, let's get back to the uh, little sample or the, the test that we're doing here between a DSLR and this uh, uh, 4K uh, point and shoot camera and I, I think it's mirrors. I think it's APS-C. You know what? I don't even know what kind of lens system this has So if you know, let me know down on the bottom uh, But let me know what you think of the quality. Is it different? This is a 2.0 uh, uh, f 2.0 uh, focal length and so is there any blurry background going on? Let me do this real quick. It does have a button and now it's supposed to be defocusing the background, okay? Did you notice anything different? So let me know what it looks like comparing the two, what looks more pleasing to you? What about the sound? They have different preamps, so which one sounds better? And do you even use a DSLR or mirrorless camera like this 
in your content creation. Let me know that over there too. I like hearing from you. So hey, do me a favor. If this is the kind of content you appreciate, become a subscriber. And I do appreciate a comment. Even if you don't give me a thumbs up, you know, at least leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the, the videos. Uh, remember, keep it kind. Uh, but always looking for feedback because like anyone else, I like to improve. So hey, this is Mike. This is Low Death Media. Uh, just a real quick video today. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.